All right, so if you're watching this video, you are dying to learn how to divide decimals. And it really is the same but different as dividing whole numbers. So um, there's a little bit of differences, but it's all about the Ds, dividing decimals. So there's two things that you need to focus on, the setup of how to do it and how to solve a division of decimals problem. So when it comes to the setup, um, there's something here, it's called, I call it, decimal to the side, slide, slide. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. Um, as fifth graders, you don't really come across problems where there's a decimal to the side. That's more of a sixth grade thing. But for those that are ready for it in fifth grade, I'll introduce it. And then the other thing with the setup is simple with the D, the decimal point simply gets pulled straight up. And I'll show you that in a second. When it comes to solving, it's also all about the Ds. The first D is that a decimal and a remainder can never be together in an answer. So you will never get an answer to a division problem that has both a decimal point and a remainder. They can never, ever, ever be together. So that's gonna be something we'll talk about. And I guess I need to get rid of me here. The final thing that you need to think about once, ooh, there is another, maybe not. I thought there was another one there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and model this for you. And so here's a, an example of a dividing decimals problem. And when it comes to the setup, decimal to the side, slide, slide. There won't be a decimal to the side here. I'll show you that in a second. And then also the decimal point gets pulled straight up. So let me show you this problem. Oops, I did not go to the right spot there. Sorry about that. So I went ahead and set up the problem 87 and 5 tenths divided by 5. And first things first, I told you decimal to the side, slide, slide. If you look here, the number to the side, our divisor, is not a decimal. It's a whole number. So we don't have to worry about that at all. If that were a decimal, then we would have to do something, but we won't. Um, and we're not gonna have really any problems that will as fifth graders. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the problem just like we've been setting up our problems. Boom, simple, easy peasy. The other D over here is simply the decimal point gets pulled straight up. So you can see very clearly that the decimal point in 87 and 5 tenths is right here. That means that when I get my answer, my decimal point is going to be right there. That's it. Now we simply need to solve just as we would a regular division problem. Five times one gets me to five. I'm three away. Don't forget to carry those three up next door. To get me closest to 37, it's five times seven gets me to 35. I'm only two away there. Bring that two up here and five times five gets me exactly at 25 and boom. I'm done. My final, final answer here, and we need to make sure that we include that decimal point, is 17 and 5 tenths. All right, so let's take a look at another one. We have 9 and 45 hundredths divided by 9. I'm just going to go ahead and set up just like I normally do. Decimal to the side, slide, slide. Well, there is no decimal to the side. It's a whole number, so I don't need to worry about that all. Um, and then the other thing that I need to remember is wherever that decimal point is, I'm simply going to throw it straight up into my answer. Not over, not diagonal, straight up. And that's going to keep all of our place value parking spots the same. And now it just becomes a regular division problem. Nine times one gets me to nine. I'm zero away. Bring that zero up. Nine times zero is the best I can do. That lands at zero and I'm four away. Throw that four up here. Nine times five is the best I'm going to get there. And it's going to hit my target perfectly. And boom. My final, final answer, including that decimal point, is one and five hundredths. Now, I do want to go back here because there is a very important thing that I told you here, that a decimal and a remainder can never be together in an answer. So we just solved two problems where that didn't happen. When we got our final answer, when we finished solving, there was no remainder. We were able to hit that target in our final place value both times, all right? However, let me get here. I realize I'm not being super smooth here with my keys, um, but we know that a decimal and a remainder can never be together in an answer. But what if? 
what if we come across a problem like um, the one we're going to do next where we do have a remainder? We're not allowed to have a remainder and a decimal in the same answer. So if that ever happens, if you end with a remainder, simply annex a zero into the next place value and keep going. So here's an example of a problem, 78 and 3 tenths divided by two. So I went ahead and I set that up right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set it up um, to get ready to solve it. Boom, boom, boom. All right, decimal to the side, slide, slide. There's no decimal here, so we're good. And before I start solving, I simply bring that decimal point directly up. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve just like normal. Two times three gets me to six. I'm one away. Throw that one up here. Two times nine hits 18 and zero away. Throw that up here. And two times one gets me to two and I'm one away. Now, in the past, we would have taken that one and we would have made it our remainder. But we can't do that because the rules are very clear. If you have a decimal point in your answer, which we do because there was a decimal point in our dividend, we cannot have a remainder. So if that happens, all you need to do is basically stretch the problem out another place value. And we're going to, right now, this is the um, let's see, this is the decimal point. So this is the tenths. This is the hundredths place. Our original number, 78 and 3 tenths, had zero hundredths. So I'm simply going to annex a zero here into the hundredths place and give myself a place to throw that leftover one up and create a new target of 10. And now I can keep going. Two times five lands exactly at 10 and boom, no remainder. So my final, final answer is right here, 39 and 15 hundredths. Let me show you another example. I have zero and nine tenths divided by six. So decimal to the side, slide, slide. There's no decimal here. And bring my decimal point straight up. I'm going to go ahead and solve. I know that 6 times 0 lands at 0. I am 0 away. That was pretty simple. Throw my 0 up here. 6 times 1 is the best I'm going to do. It lands at um, 6, and I'm 3 away. In the past, we would have thrown this up and made it a remainder of 3, but that's not allowed. You cannot have a remainder and a decimal in the same answer. So we still need to do something with that three. We still need somewhere to throw it up to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to stretch out my problem and create another place value. Well, this place value would be the hundredths place. And my original number, zero nine tenths, had zero hundredths. So I'm just gonna annex a zero here and give myself somewhere to throw that three up to. And so now I can create my new target of 30. And I know six times five, it lands directly at 30 and boom, no more remainder, no more problem. And I get a final answer of zero and 15 hundredths. Now as fifth graders, I will only be giving you at first problems where if you have a remainder, you will only need to annex a zero one time. But in reality, you could have to continue to annex zero after zero after zero. But for me, I promise you, at least for now, I'm only going to ever give you problems where if you need to annex a zero, it will only have to happen once before we have a nice, neat, no remainder left. So I know I went through this really quickly. What I would like you to do is just spend a second, pause the video, and give these four problems a try. I will tell you right away that these two problems, they will not require any annexing of zeros. It will just be a nice, neat problem. Don't forget to pull that decimal point up. These two problems, you will end up with a remainder. So you will need to annex a zero, create a new place value, annex a zero, give yourself somewhere to throw that digit up to, um, and then you'll be able to get the answer there. What I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video and work on that. When you hit play, um, I will be there to go through the problems with you. 
All right, let's go ahead and do this one. We have, I'm gonna try and do this and fit it in here. We have 62 and 4 tenths divided by four. Go ahead here and set it up. Boom, boom. I realize I'm not giving myself a lot of space. Your decimal point in your answer should be right here. And now I'm simply going to go through and solve. Four times one is four. We're two away. Oh boy, sorry, throw the two up here. That's 22, four times five lands at 20, and I'm two away. Throw that two up here, and four times six is 24, and boom, no remainder, nice neat package. Your final answer should be 15 and six tenths. All right, let's take a look at this one. I'll try and write a little bit neater, holy guacamole. So we have zero and 108 thousandths divided by two. Go ahead and set this up for us here. Boom, boom, boom. And again, that decimal points here, which means it's gonna be straight up in our answer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and solve. Two times zero lands at zero, I'm zero away. Create my new target of one, it's zero again. Um, zero times two is zero, I'm one away. Throw that one up, create a target of 10. Two times five is 10, I'm zero away. Throw that zero up here. And two times four is eight exactly, which means no remainder. And my final, final answer is right here. It is zero and 54 thousandths. Now those were just kind of straight up problems. Um, these are going to be a little bit more challenging because I'm telling you right now, we're gonna have to annex. So I have three and 98 hundredths divided by five. All right, let's see what we got here. Boom, boom, boom. All right, decimal point just goes straight up. I'm just gonna go ahead and solve this. That would be zero and I'm three away. Throw the three up here. I know five times seven is 35. Sorry for that terrible three and five there. And the difference between 39 and 35 is four. I'm gonna throw the four up here and create a new target of 48. Five times nine does not get me to 48, it only gets me to 45, so I'm three away. Now again, that three in the past would be our remainder, but we're not allowed to have a remainder when we already have a decimal point. So I still need somewhere to throw that three up to. Well, I need to create a new place value and annex a zero in there to create that place value. I can't just put a three up there. I have to have that zero for a new target of 30. And five times six hits that 30 exactly, and we are done. So my final answer is zero and 796 thousandths. All right, final one here, zero and 134 thousandths divided by four. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and set it up. Boom, 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 throwing that decimal point straight up here. Now, again, in real life, I'm just gonna go through this while I talk. In, okay, this helps. in real life, you could have to annex multiple place values with zeros. We're not gonna do that in fifth grade. I'm only gonna at first stick you at one place value before it gets into a nice neat package. All right, four times three lands at 12. We're one away. Throw that one up here. I don't know how to get rid of that thing there. Hold on. It won't go away. There we go. Um, and now, so there's nothing times four to make 14, but the closest I'm going to get is three lands at 12, and I'm two away. In the past, that two would become a remainder, but we're not allowed to do that because we have a decimal point. So what we need to do is we need to annex a zero into our next place value to create a place to throw that two up to and continue on with the problem. And I know four times five lands directly at 20 and I am zero away and we are done. So our final answer, even though it goes further into our Thuniverse than we're used to going, looks like that. Zero and 335 10 thousandths is what it would be. And that could happen in these problems. So this is just a start. I will put a review video on for tomorrow. I don't really have any work for you to complete, to practice, um, hopefully. If you didn't understand though, please rewatch the video and just give it another try. Good job today.